Welcome to Legworks, today from Playa de Muro on Mallorca, the exact spot that soon will be the start and finish for the Mallorca 312. I'll take you on a tour around the 312 kilometers and let you in on insights and offer some advice so that you don't do the same mistakes as I did on my first Mallorca 312 last year. Interested in what my mistakes were? Well, keep on watching. The Mallorca 312 is an annual road bike race where riders can choose one of three routes 167, 225 or 312 kilometers. I'm already signed up for the 2022 edition of Mallorca 312 on April 30th and have taken part for the first time last year. Due to special circumstances, last year's edition took place at the end of October, which means at the time of the start of the race was 6.30 a.m. and it was still dark and it stayed dark for the first hour and a half. And it was a bit raining, just like today. But let's start with a quick look around at the area close to the start and finish line, where you will be able to pick up your bib number and your jersey. Additionally, you'll find a lot of booths, recycling clothes and accessories, where you can make sure to get some head and tail lights, which are mandatory, in case you didn't bring any. There are also a few hotels, literally just across the corner. I stayed at the Sisforges, where I had a decent room, including a kitchen and overlooking the pool and the beach. Here is the first pro tip. If you can afford it, try to get a VIP package. It will pay off on race day. Let me tell you, race day starts early. I set my alarm for 5 a.m., had some breakfast, got suited up and headed over to the start, which was just across the street. All riders will be assigned into boxes and the start does happen in stages, box by box. It's good to know that although the race starts at 6.30, you'll be unlikely to be able to start at 6.30 on the dot. First, the VVIPs will start and that will take a few minutes. And last year, such VVIPs included Jan Ulrich and Alberto Contador. Once they take off, box after box will start where the VIP box I mentioned earlier will be next to leave. This is important as depending on the box that you are in, you might only start at 6.45 or later. Why is this important? Well, if you're looking to ride the 225 or 312 kilometers, you might not make it to the cutoff times. That's exactly what happened to me at the last year but it was not due to my starting time, as I was lucky to be in the first box. Right after the start, the peloton is moving across the flats, along the coast and towards the Tramontana mountains. Looking back, I made one of the first mistakes as I got taken away from the high pace of the peloton. We were moving at 35 to 37 kilometers per hour until hitting the first ascent. It was a really awesome feeling to ride through the dark on closed roads. So my second pro tip, know your pace and stick to it. I promised myself to keep looking much more at my heart rate and power at the next race. Looking back, not keeping my pace was my biggest and most devastating mistake. I was rushing through the first 150 kilometers, which is basically the entire mountain chain, and was completely knackered when I arrived in the south, having completed around 2,500 meters of elevation by then. Thus, my third pro tip. Keep an eye on the group with the green polka dots. They ride at a pace that ensures you meet all the cutoff times. Let's talk about fueling and the food stations. There are plenty of stops and the first one is actually quite close to the famous Sacalobra climb here at Gorg Blau. However, it only offers water and no food, but most riders are skipping that one in order to save time. And based on your bottle strategy, you might be able to skip it too. Especially the first food station where they offer food can get a bit crowded. But since everything is very well organized, you'll be back on your bike in no time. There are plenty of water taps to refill multiple bottles simultaneously. You'll have access to a selection of sandwiches, fruits like banana, nuts, gel and other things. Unless you don't need anything specific or you prefer a special brand, you don't really need to pack anything. It's all taken care of. Kudos to the organizers and the very friendly staff at the food stations.
Never be, I've been down and I reappear You got some money on the line, you better put it here Rolling in and doing that work Check priorities, I'm doing that first them Checks big and I'm sure that that hurts But it's checkmate, we ain't selling short, no the work one of the highlights for me was the 12 kilometer descent into the village of Soyer. I've taken that descent many times before, but never had the opportunity to do so on a closed road. It really is a comfortable feeling to know that there won't be any car coming up next corner. After approximately 95 kilometers, you'll head to a fork, where you need to decide if you are going to ride the 167 kilometers, or you feel like you have it in you to fight for 225 or even 312 kilometers. Either way, after the fork, there's the first feeding station that's going to offer some food. If you've chosen the longer route, you'll remain in the mountains for many more kilometers. Actually, when I completed the first 150 kilometers and reached my second feeding station for the day, I was so exhausted that I needed a break of about 30 minutes or so. I completely bonked and required food and rest. Some of my buddies didn't feel much better and morale was at its low. Or so we thought. Pro tip number four. Leaving the Tramontana mountains doesn't mean it's going to be flat until the end. Right after the next feeding station in Escabdea, you're in for another ascent that will take you to an elevation of 410 meters. And when you reach the valley after that, it's just to go up again. This time up to 460 meters. This really destroyed our spirits and we were starting to throw away the idea of riding the 312 kilometers. We were just thinking, let's just survive the 225 kilometers. But then something remarkable happened. Pretty much out of nowhere, a young endurance rider we knew was offering us to sit on his wheel. And boy, did we sit on his rear wheel. He was dragging us across the flats until the next food station. And thanks to him and his effort, we could recover while constantly doing 32 to 35 kilometers per hour. When we reached our third food station that day, we felt recovered. Nevertheless, we took some more time to rest and refuel. And that's where I made the next and last fatal mistake that day. Even though I didn't really need to, I spent too much time at the food station in Yoseta. Although I was in pretty good shape afterwards, and had a good pace, I missed the cutoff time for the 312 kilometer route. By just a few minutes, forced to complete the 225 kilometers. Still, I have another tip for you. Be careful of the roads right after the third food station in Yuseta. I saw so many riders with flats as the roads are bumpy and has small gravel on it. When getting closer to the coast, you'll enter a field of zigzags with 90 degree corners that can be very tricky. Depending on the wind, you face crosswinds that can lead to serious crashes, as we have witnessed. As we approach Playa de Muro and we're pedaling for the last few kilometers, I have to be honest, I was a bit relieved to get out of the saddle soon. At that point, I could hardly imagine sitting for about three more hours. I made the 225 kilometers in nine hours and 22 minutes, including a staggering 55 minutes spent at the food stations. All in all, it was an exceptional experience and my longest ride ever. I'm sure that if I keep to my pace in the beginning, I won't need as much rest and I will be able to ride the full 312 kilometers next time with you.